music lovers, welcome back to the channel. This time we have a guitar I'm particularly fond of, the Squire Telecaster. This classic 50s model Telecaster belongs to my buddy Babu from Peace Frog's Den. They have this as sort of a studio guitar. Anyone can use it if they need, or if they just pick it up and just, you know, play along if it strikes them with the inspiration. But this particular guitar got very noisy, almost as if it wasn't shielded. And it's been upgraded with American Electronics, new potentiometers, switches, and whatnot. So it's kind of strange that, you know, it's so noisy. It sounds just like an unshielded cheap guitar. So uh, follow along as I investigate and correct the problems with it, do a little fret work, and get this thing playing like a dream. So let's get started by stripping it down. I took all the components off the face of the guitar because I honestly thought I was going to have to shield it. It was after hearing what the problems were with it and it was being so noisy. So first I remove the bridge, then we'll get the control plate out of the way, followed by the pick guard. Only five screws hold the pick guard in on the classic 50s models. Here we go. And this is when I discover that the cavities are actually shielded, which is quite a mystery. So a little microfiber cloth to keep from scratching the face of the guitar with the control panel. If it has any rough edges. And take a look under the bridge. Let's make sure that the ground wire is actually present. And there it is. So that's not part of the problem. Uh, look under the pick card, see what we have going on underneath here. It appears to be shielded as well, but I have seen guitars with black painted cavities that weren't actually shielded. So I got out the ohm meter, tested as you can see, uh, it's fully conductive. So it wouldn't seem to be the problem. Let me check this cavity. And then that's when I noticed there's no shielding paint around the ground screw coming from the control plate, uh, from the potentiometers. So as I'm checking there, I see, and then I actually touch the Ohm meter to the screw and no conductivity whatsoever. Now that I know the problem with the shielding is simply an open circuit, uh, we can move on to cleaning and setting up the guitar. So let's strip down the bridge here, uh, get a little CLP. Break Free CLP is a great product. Uh, it takes corrosion off, cleans things really well. Uh, it's not toxic. Um, it's not hard on plastics and whatnot, so I like to use it on guitars. And it actually is really good at removing rust and preventing future rust. So, And the, the uh, ashtray bridge on this thing was pretty gunky, so here we go, get it cleaned out. When you shield the cavities on a guitar, you are basically creating a Faraday cage around the items to prevent electromagnetic interference from being picked up by the electronic items you're shielding. So here I'm gonna go ahead and put a little more shielding tape around the front pickup because it didn't actually cover the entire cavity, which left a gap in the Faraday cage. A uh, little the copper tape there, you wanna make sure it sticks so it's always good to clean off the surface with some alcohol. And then uh, just rub it on, make sure it's on there good. I also made sure it was enough to actually cover the entire cavity. And then I also installed a piece over the dog leg but didn't show that there. So here we use the shielding paint um, it's really next nasty stuff. I always wear a respirator when I use it. And basically you're just creating a circuit to help complete the Faraday cage. And this should shut all the noise down. So dab a little paint on it. And I also went and added a little bit to uh, where the bridge, where the wiring came out for the bridge ground and also up onto the edges of the cavities to help just in case the paint breaks off again, you get a natural connection with the metal of the bridge or control plate. So after giving the guitar a good cleaning and a little polish, as well as cleaning up the pick guard somewhat, it's time to reassemble it. First we'll put the bridge in, making sure we have a good ground connection for the control wire. There we go. And I always use a screwdriver to reinstall the screws instead of using a drill. It's very easy to destroy screws or break them using a drill or an impact driver to install them on a guitar. So. A little bit of extra wrist work, but it's worth the trouble. The feel you have with a screwdriver is much better. And then I'll install the control plate here. Being careful again not to scratch the guitar. It was a little pitted, used some COP on it and had to clean it up a little bit first before we get it back on there, get some of the pits down and wipe some of the gunk off. 
Again, I really like to use the break free COP because it helps to keep the corrosion down in the future if at all possible. It's a little bit of protection to that. So reinstall the control plate and then go around and tighten all the screws. It's one of the last steps I usually do on a guitar because basically all of the screws on guitars vibrate and come loose. Like the screws that are on these tuning keys were just a hair loose. So gave them all a good tightening. And the last step is to give the guitar a little bit of a fret dress. Here we're leveling the frets with some 1500 grit sandpaper on a flexible sanding block. I like to do this to make sure everything's even, get any nicks and scratches out of the frets. We had a couple of high frets I noticed when I was using the rocker, so we'll go ahead and file those down some. They were using a flat file. I had to be very careful with a flat file. You can tear the neck up badly if you're not careful. So, All right, have to check multiple times. Don't want to take too much material off at once. Can't really add it back. You just have to replace the fret. And after getting it down to a good level, as you can see, it took a little while. Take the sandpaper and give it another good leveling sand just to kind of get any scratches out as much as we can on the surface. And then using the uh, fret crowning file, we'll give it a few passes with the fret crowning file to return it to the nice rounded shape it had originally. So using the string radius gauge, I verify that it does in fact have a nine and a half inch radius, which shows the, the level of authenticity they use on these squires and trying to make them like a 50s guitar. So moving on to checking the, the neck relief, it actually was a little flat, so I gave it a slight adjustment. Turn the truss rod very carefully. Never want to force a truss rod, it should always just turn. If it doesn't, back off, ask someone that knows more. Check it again to verify that it was good. Wanted to make sure when I gave it back to the guys at the den that it actually was in a really nice setup so it could play well. Wanted to make sure the action was really low. So here we're checking the string height, which uh, turned out it wasn't bad to start with. It was right at the, you know, around the lowest you want to go without starting to incur some string buzz. So uh, with the check the E strings and see if we get them to about the height we want. Then using a string radius gauge, that's measured nine and a half, as same as the guitar. You pull it up tight up taut against the strings and then pluck them one at a time. Any of them ring out or too high and need to be lowered slightly. There was a couple of them that were a little high, so get your Allen wrench out and adjust the saddle. There we go. Check our work, make sure that it's actually on the correct radius. And then lastly, set the intonation, which was actually fairly well set. It's always nice when you work on a guitar and don't have to actually go to a lot of trouble to fix it up. There you go. Almost dead silent now after a little bit of a detective work to figure out where the shielding problem was. A little bit of work on the frets and whatnot. This thing plays beautifully. So, hey, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And check again next time. We'll be back soon with more stuff. Maybe even some more Telecaster stuff. So, thanks. See you soon.